that's a good way to start this message to bring us back to the cross to bring us back to that moment in which um, everything we need is fulfilled in Jesus Christ um, in that gospel reading this morning um, it focused on David God's chosen servant um, putting everything aside so that um, they would have everything they need. Do you, too, want to go back with Miss Jane for junior church? She's standing in the back waiting for you. Okie dokie. Thank you, Jane, for reminding me. So the message this morning is called Connected or Unplugged. And um, anybody remember the, the hedge trimmers that you had to plug in? And, you know, you get right to where you think you're going, and all of a sudden it pops out of the wall. And you got to go all the way back around the house to plug it in. Or worse, you get, right, you get to go, and all of a sudden you swing, and you cut the cord in half. Anybody ever done that? <laughs> Amen. 
<laughs> well, now they have these great 20 volt or 20, yeah, 20 volt battery pack ones. You can't cut your cord in half. But you know, you can still get unplugged. When you get unplugged, all of a sudden, whoop, whoop, whoop. I stop hearing you. All you do is flip the switch, and my, my voice gets louder, and you can hear me. And so being connected and unplugged can change the way our life functions, amen? You know, if you unplug the refrigerator to save energy, what happens to the stuff inside? It's no good. Especially if you get days later to plug it in. You know, that happens when the power goes off. We have that friendly reminder that there's certain things that we need to function. And to, to endure all things. And, and that's where we're going this morning. We're going to realize the benefit of being constantly connected to Christ and the, the peril and the strife and the stress that happens if we wander and become unplugged. And it's very easy to become unplugged because that's all the devil can do. That's all he can do is, is hope to reach over and pull us out of the wall. Disconnect our heart and mind from Christ for a short moment that might lead to our fall or lead to us wandering from Jesus. So as we gather this morning and as we praise and worship Jesus, our Savior, it's, it's easy to do on Sunday morning, amen? Because that's the way we've always done it. But we leave this place. And God knows that we leave this place. And, and His perfect plan has always been to have at our access opportunities to plug in, opportunities to connect. Because of his love and God's understanding, he knows that mankind, humanity, the children of God, have a propensity to walk towards darkness. Amen? We kind of like that dangerous edge at times. But God's plan was to give us leaders, teachers, scholars, and messengers through His Word, His undisputed Word, to guide us through the darkness and the pitfalls of life. And because of that love, God's, God is faithful to those who love Him. God is faithful to those who, streak, who seek to be constantly connected in spirit and in word and in law. This faithfulness was first established in God's covenant with David. And that's where we're going to explore this morning a little bit of the Old Testament in which God promised David a connection that would never fail him. And we're going to go to the book of 2 Samuel, which was written about a thousand years before Jesus came to the world. And, and the writing of 2 Samuel was God establishing an earthly king to lead his people. Someone, God realized that his, his people needed visual proof of God's presence in their life and visual leaders. So God anointed David and made covenant with him in this promise. It's found in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 7. A covenant, by the way, is a legally binding agreement for the per or promise that carries the strongest commitment through word and deed. In the writing of, of this um, book in 2 Samuel, a covenant between two people was legally binding. When David was settled in his palace and the Lord had given him rest from all the surrounding enemies, the king summoned Nathan the prophet. Look, Nathan said, I am living in a beautiful cedar palace. But the ark of God, of the God, the ark of God is out there in a tent. Nathan replied to the king, "Go ahead and do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you." But that night the Lord spoke to David. Go and tell or to Nathan, he said, "Go and tell my servant David, this is what the Lord has declared. Are you the one to build a house for me to live in?" For I have never lived in a house from the day I brought the Israel's, Israelites out of Egypt until this very day. I have always moved from one place to another with them in a tent and a tabernacle as my dwelling. 
you no matter yet no matter where I have gone with the Israelites, I have never once complained to them, to the Israel's tribal leaders and the shepherds of my people. I have never asked them, why haven't you built me a beautiful cedar house? God is explaining that don't be so focused on the building. Stay focused on your relationship with me. I'll tell you when it's time to build the temple. Nathan obviously was connected to God because it was God's will that he would speak to him to give this message to David. Now go and say to my servant David, this is what the Lord of heaven of heaven's armies has declared. He said, I took you from tending sheep in the pasture and selected you to be the leader of my people in Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have destroyed all of your enemies before your eyes. Now, he said, I will make your name as famous as anyone who has ever lived on this earth. And I will provide a homeland for my people, Israel, planting them in a secure place where they will never be disturbed. Evil nations won't oppress them as they have done in the past. And starting from the time I appointed judges to rule my people, Israel, I will give you rest from all your enemies. Furthermore, the Lord declares that he will make a house for you, a dynasty of kings. For when you die and are buried with your ancestors, I will raise one of your descendants, your own offspring, and I will make his kingdom strong. What is God promising David there? He says, don't worry about the building. Worry about you and I and what I am declaring as your future. And even when you die, your legacy and your lineage will continue. And I will raise up one of your descendants, your own offspring, and I will make his kingdom strong. His kingdom is who? The kingdom of Jesus Christ. The lineage and the prophecy of Christ's coming has been established. He is the one who will build a house and a temple for my name. Only the church built in Jesus' name. And I will secure his royal throne forever. For I will be his father and he will be my son. If he sins, I will correct and discipline him with the rod like any father will do. This passage is critical to our connection point with God. Realizing that it was God's plan thousands of years before the coming of Jesus Christ to make sure that we had what we needed to be what? Connected to him. For in Christ's own words... He says, yes, your bodies will die, but you will live forever for I am in you and you are in me. That's that connection point in receiving Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Wait on God and follow his will. David's David's greatest blessing would come when? After he died. After he was gone. David would not build God's temple, but his descendants would establish it forever. Who established God's church? Jesus did. Though he would not build God's temple, God would establish David's David's lineage, lineage as holy and blessed and everlasting. Proverbs 3 writes, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. That's the essential ingredient of being connected to God. Trusting Him in everything. Everything. Not, not, and, and here's where it becomes really difficult. Be still and know that I am God, as it's written in Psalm 46, and wait upon my guidance. Remember when Jesus said to the disciples, I'm leaving you, but stay here? Stay here until what? The advocate comes, the other, the one who will be with you and live in you. That is the Holy Spirit. In Hebrews 10, it says, Patience and endurance is what you need now, so that you will continue to do God's will, and then you will receive all all that He has promised. 
Do you know what God has promised most of everything? Never to leave us or forsake us, but to be with us always until the end of the ages. And when our earthly bodies are gone, the most beautiful thing in the world happens. We begin eternity with Jesus. And and the Gospels say that that eternal blessing is one in which there's no more pain, no more suffering. (laughs) That knife that's in my hip and back every morning is gone. And I walk with Him, and I talk with Him, and He tells me I am His own. I'm not... you, You know the best thing about heaven? You don't have to wait for me to tell you about it because you're standing in the presence of the Most High God, our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Pastors just get get to sit back and listen to in awe of His righteousness, in awe of all the prophecy and promise that have come true in our lives. As much as I weeped for Irene's passing, I rejoiced in her homecoming, and in her blessing. The blessing of this covenant that God made with David is that you and I are established in God's will for the world 3,000 years ago. God made this plan for you and I to be ambassadors of His love. Because Jesus is what? He's alive in us. Because Jesus is what? In you and me and in this place. Connection to God equals peace and blessed assurance. But being unplugged gives us what? Stress, angst, abandonment, fear, anxiety, dot, 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 dot. Add your own trouble. In Mark Mark 6, um, Jesus was in the peak of his ministry with his disciples. And and Mark writes about Jesus taking the disciples away to a quiet place where they might rest a while. The apostles returned to Jesus from their ministry tour and told him all that they had done and all that they had taught. And Jesus said to them, let us go off by ourselves to a quiet place where we might rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles didn't even have time to eat. The world was falling in love with the physical presence of Christ and the miracles from heaven that he was bringing to the king, bringing to the world. So they left by boat for a quiet place where they could be alone. But many people recognized them and saw them leaving. And the people from many towns ran ahead along the shore and got there before they did. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat. And he had compassion upon them. Because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So once again, he began teaching them the many things. Even God's plans changed. For his people. God's love has no end. Compassion and love are the cornerstone of our faith in Jesus. Amen? We try to emulate that in how we interact with people. I'm so sure of this. I'm going to the land up north next week. Yes. Everlasting faith, and and hear this point, because this is one I think we can get tripped up into. It's not convenient. It's eternal. We need to practice taking God with us everywhere we go. Everywhere we go. You know, when when the blessings are coming and and life is good and, and we feel good, stop and praise the Lord. Don't just wait for the storm to come. But practicing taking God with us in everywhere and everything and everything we do keeps us connected. Amen? It keeps us... Remember the the test last week where we stood like this? 
And I said, do that with both eyes open. What happens when you close one eye? Go ahead, try it. Well, try it with both eyes open and then close one eye. What happens? It moves. <laughs> it moves. <laughs> yeah, it either moves to the left or it moves to the right. It depends how eye dominant you are. But so that's, that's, that's the world, that's God telling us, look at me with both eyes open. Don't wink at me. But give me your full attention so that I can bless you and I can make you connected to me. Because of our love and faith in Jesus Christ and God's Spirit, we are connected. But we have to be on guard and not allow Satan to lull us into a casual relationship. For that only leads to being unplugged. And when you're unplugged, it's very easy to lose your way. Unplugged is being happy in your relationship with God. Having no spiritual hunger, only calling on God when you need Him. Now, not allowing God to bless you at His will, but demanding your own will. Pastors have a word called comfortable Christianity. And that's when we, for lack of a better word, play church. We aren't about truly glorifying God. Him, but we're more about making ourselves look good. When we're unplugged from Christ, we withdraw from fellowship. We withdraw from worship. We become stagnant in our spiritual practices. We forget how to love one another. That's the most important is we forget how to love one another. I had a funeral yesterday for no one that goes to this church. Ann Guybe has this um, propensity to call me when she needs a pastor. Because she knows Harry Milligan was my mentor. <laughs> and Harry always said, if the Lord calls you to speak his word, speak it. As the ones in the pew still got a chance to meet him. The one in the box, yeah, they're either having the time of their life or it's pretty hot. Don't worry about them. Being unplugged. It's, it's really hard to do a service for someone you don't know. I'm going to tell you that. It's like the first Sunday in a new appointment. You look out there and don't know a soul. You don't know if they're already talking about how fat you are or that you don't have a tie on, or you don't look like the last pastor, and you don't talk like the last pastor. You don't know. Yeah, you know the devil puts all that in your head. And <laughs> you, you know what I mean. Yes. He scares the bejeebers out of pastors every Sunday because we're afraid to get up here and tell you what the Lord's saying for the fact that you might think we're crazy. Now, I've been here seven years, so I know you all think I'm crazy. But the one thing you know is that I love Jesus. Amen? I love him with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. And I can still be unplugged. I can still lose my way if I'm not diligent in the process of staying connected to God through his word, through prayer, through fellowship and through love. I'm sitting here Thursday in this church trying to get things done because I'm, you know, I, I want to make sure you are all ready for that Sunday when I'm on vacation. The phone won't quit ringing. You guys are bringing stuff in downstairs so the alarm's going bring, 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 bring. Nobody's coming to see me. You're all downstairs. And all of a sudden, a bag of chicken nuggets show up. A gentleman walks in, sets them on my desk. He says, you're busy. I'll see you later. He walks out. A bag of chicken nuggets. How could he know that I was hungry? 
How could he know that barbecue sauce that was all that was on my mind and, and a little dip of chicken nuggets would appease the hunger spirits within me? But he followed God's spirit. He got, followed God's will. He said, poor Pastor John's in there working his fingers to the bone. And if he's not careful, he'll get skinny and might lose his edge. He didn't bring me a four-piece chicken nugget, not a six-piece chicken nugget, but a nine-piece chicken nugget. And I almost wanted to share them with someone, but I became unplugged and said, nope, they're all mine. And they were delicious. Thank you, my friend. Being unplugged is easy in life if we don't continue to practice the spiritual disciplines. God has created a plan for us. I want to go back to one, one more story in the book of Mark with Jesus. They had crossed the lake and landed in Generaset. They brought the boat to the shore and climbed out. The people recognized Jesus at once, and they ran throughout the entire city carrying sick people on mats to wherever they heard Christ was. Wherever he went in the villages and the cities or the countryside, they brought the sick out to the marketplaces, and they begged him to let the sick touch the least fringe of his robe. For all who touched him were healed. <laughs> that is connected faith. Lord, you don't need to speak to me. You don't need to touch me. Because of your son Jesus Christ and my love for him, you live in me. Amen? That's how much God loves us. He has promised to live and dwell within us. Paul wrote in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. You know why he said that? Because God is love. Amen? Amen. As we go through the craziness of summer, time with family, visiting friends, strive to stay connected. Beware of the pitfalls of being unplugged. Shout with joy for the blessings that he gives you. For I will never leave you or forsake you, said Christ. I am with you always, even until the end of ages. That's connected to Christ. That's what guides us through the storms. That's what makes us whole. Amen? Amen. Let's close our worship this morning as the praise team leads us as we stand, if you're able, in the song, Oceans.
I leave you with these thoughts. Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus in chapter 2 of his book, and he said, Don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. You were once called the uncircumcised heathens by Jews who were proud of their circumcision, even though it only affected their bodies and not their hearts. In those days when you were living apart from Christ, you were excluded from citizenship amongst the people of Israel. And you did not know the covenant promises that God had made to them. You lived in this world without God and without hope. But now, you have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to Him through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Together as one body, Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of His death on the cross. And our hostility toward each other was put to death. Lord Jesus, unite us again. Open our hearts and minds to your will so we may live with one another and love one another as you have loved us. Amen. Go in his faith and love and spirit and share it with the world.